14 through 19. Romans chapter 14, 16 through 19. It tells us, Let not then your good be evil spoken of. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace, and things wherewith one may edify another. We we'll talk about all things that edify. Okay, so uh, be seated, and we'll about to pray again. Lord, I just asked, I just thought about, I missed, uh, forgot to pray for the Roushes, and I pray that you lift them up and help them with this uh, COVID recovery and others too that have uh, had a touch of those things. I pray for them. Then, God, I pray you be with your word. Bless it today and inspire us through uh, what, you, what you've written and help us to understand it in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> the passage at hand talked about being careful when we judge others and uh, especially when we put a stumbling block to fall in another brother's way. And uh, I'll just again say this uh, we are prone to wonder and fall away from the perfect will of God. That, that's, that's our fallen nature. So if we can accept it and then always keep an eye on it, it would be easier for us to get back corrected. I know John Deere 3010. It was a tricycle front end. It wasn't mine. It was my dad's. But it had the tendency that if you didn't hold on to the steering wheel, those wheels would just turn real easy back and forth. And so when I was uh, driving that uh, planning, I always had to keep my hands very on there to make sure it was going straight. We had a 1020 that power steering, and the power steering was so good that it would just steer it on its own sometimes, you know what I'm saying? And so it had a lot of play, but because I knew that, I could keep my hands on it and help to keep it going straight rather than just trusting, hey, it's, it's, it's going straight, I don't have to worry about it. No, you knew it could do that, so you would keep an eye on it. Well, our hearts and our flesh, uh, we need to keep an eye on it. And uh, <coughs> even though things can be of... Uh, not wrong in themselves, the meat and, and that, those kind of uh, issues, meat and drink, was what we were talking about last week a little bit. And it says, don't destroy a brother with your meat. And then verse 16, let not then your good be evil spoken of. Make sure that if we're doing good, do it with others in mind, be charitable about it, and have some love for one another, and let that be the, uh, the guiding uh, principle. Verse 17 says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Can somebody say amen to that? We're not going to heaven by what you eat and what you don't eat and what you drink and what you don't drink. Now, I think there are some things you ought not to drink. Me and Joyce will say amen to that, right? There are some things that will destroy your family, destroy your uh, things around you. Uh, Is it going to expel you from heaven? No. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from how many sin? All sin. But boy, you can leave a, a world of hurt in your path if you're not careful what you're drinking. Same with what you're eating. Hey, I can eat sugar donuts. I, I was listening to Tim Hawkins. Have you ever heard that guy? He's a Christian comedian, and he plays funny songs. And, and he was talking a, about turning 40, which um, somebody I know is a couple years older than that. But he said that he can't eat Krispy Kreme donuts anymore. And he said, I, I live in a town that has the Krispy Kreme store where you can watch them be made. And he said, my dream is just to lay on that conveyor belt and just be totally bodily glazed by that thing. Just, just glaze me as I go through there. Now, you can eat them every, every meal, but it, it would not be good for your body. Amen? It, it would be harmful. And th- there's some things that, that you can eat or drink, but it just wouldn't be good. And so... Uh, as well, there's some things that you can go ahead and do as a Christian, but it's not going to be profitable for everybody else. So take some uh, other people's um, into your consideration. So the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. You're not going to get there by what you uh, uh, resist and, and refrain or what you take in and take part. But righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And those three good things, righteousness, peace, and joy, I think they're connected. I think that if you'll live righteously, you'll have some peace no matter what goes on around you. And if you got peace on the inside, you can have some joy come on the outside. It'll flow if you get those things in order. Now, if you're not living righteously, it's hard to have peace when you know things aren't right with you and God. 
I'm just, my, in my experience, there, there's just that, oh, oh. Yesterday, the preacher, um, the last preacher got up and, and he was talking about um, uh, rest, restoration and he used the story in the Old Testament of uh, the uprising against Moses and they didn't want him to be the leader. And then the Bible said that Moses said, if they die a normal death, then I'm not chosen. And the earth opened up and swallowed up the rebellion against Moses. Ah, oh, yikes. And then the next day, the rest of the people were mad at Moses for the earth opening up and killing the ones that rose up in rebellion. And now you're like, like I did that. Really? Like I did that? You know, can you imagine Moses in that scenario? They're mad at me because God opened up earth and swallowed up the rebellion against me. Yeah, it's my fault. I'm sorry. I, I get it. And Moses had then to run and stop the plague, and Aaron stopped the plague that was going on those people. And he was talking about restoring how it, people never deserve to be restored. That's what I got from it, too. But he said this. He said, he said, we need to preach about repentance. And if you haven't preached on repentance, and I thought, boy, I'm glad I did that two weeks ago. Man, I wiped those. I wiped the, the top of my head. I'm glad. Look, <clears throat> when, you, when you're right with God, when, I, when I've already preached about it, then I could listen to the preaching a lot more easily because I just preached on repentance, so that point didn't, hurt, didn't affect me. When you're right with God, you can have more peace inside. And then the joy, hey, if you've got it on the inside, it's easy to have that smile on the outside. Yeah. If you don't have it on the inside, that smile will get tired on the outside. Yeah. It'll get tired. It, 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 you just, I don't want to smile. But when it's on the inside, it just kind of shines out, doesn't it? Yeah. So righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Now I'm just preaching a little bit. Let me get to some teaching part. Verse number 18. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. That word edify means to build up. And I want to talk about some things that we ought to focus on that can build up rather than focusing on meat and drink and things that can destroy. Now, not all things edify. Not everything that we uh, do it, it can, will build up people. <clears throat> there are some things that we probably just don't have to say and don't have to bring up because it's not going to build up anyone. It's just going to burden or tear down. And so, but, but, but we're going to get to this point and what we can do to edify one another. i got a list of verses. I don't want to skip this joy and righteousness, though. The righteousness in verse number um, uh, 15, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I lost my place. Verse 17, the righteousness... I believe, is talking about the righteousness that we get in Christ. I do not think it's just your own doings. Now, I just mentioned that if you live right, you'll have some peace, but you're never going to be right enough to be right with God unless it comes from Jesus Christ. So pause here. Just go back in the same book. Look at Romans chapter 4. Look at a few verses that they've already spoken on this subject of righteousness. <clears throat> I like the... The verse in Corinthians that says he is our, uh, that he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. I like that verse, but just stay in the book of Romans. Look at Romans 4, 22. Four twenty two, And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Verse 21 being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform. This is talking about Abraham uh, having the, the faith that God would give him a child through Sarah's womb. And it says, Therefore, because he believed, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Look at Romans 4, verse 1, 2, and 3. What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. 
The only, the only reason that I'll go to heaven is that I have Jesus Christ's righteousness covering me in my heart. I've accepted Christ. He is my Lord and Savior. That is what makes me righteous in God's eyes. So you'll never have peace with God if you don't have that righteousness. Amen? <clears throat> you, can, you can be the most moral person and think you got everything else right, but if you don't have peace with God through that righteousness, you are an enemy of God and you'll never, ever, ever make it. Okay? So the first righteousness is the righteousness of God and it comes from believing. Brother Will was asking about a certain teenager and he said, man, I talked to him and and you know, that didn't see much fruit, but they told me they believed and they have God in their heart. They know they asked Christ to come in. I'm like, that's the only thing I did. I mean, hopefully we'll see some fruit and some effect, but that is, that's it. I believe God and it's counted to me for righteousness. Well, is it just a prayer? Well, the prayer is how you uh, call upon the Lord, but it's believing. And there will be some fruit from that either way, either discipline or right doings. It'll come eventually. But the, the actual, the way you receive it, it's a gift. You receive it. We don't earn it. We're not religious enough to get it. That's not, that's not salvation. Salvation is believing upon him who declares you to be righteous. Look at another verse. Look at Romans 5, verse 15. <clears throat> but as, I'm sorry, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, talking about Adam's offense, he caused everybody to be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ hath abounded unto many. So if one guy caused us all to die, that's what it's saying, Adam did it. One man can cause us all to live. That's why it's not your righteousness, it's Jesus. Verse 16, And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one the condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses and the justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. See that gift of righteousness? That is the, what we're talking about. Verse 18, Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto, unto justification of life. And look at verse 21. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace, what's the next word? rang through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. I don't think any of us have stopped the effects of sin on the earth. Death is still upon us. I don't think anybody's going to stop the effects of grace either because when you get it, it rings until Jesus Christ our Lord. Wow, that's pretty awesome. We can't stop people from dying, can we? But I can't stop grace from ringing either. It just rings over all of it. Man, that's a good thought. He just, oh, thank the Lord, because I, I'm, I'm not saved enough to stay going to heaven. Okay, so that's the righteousness. <clears throat> the joy it talks about. There's joy is the fruit of the Spirit. It's a, it's a product of the, of, of the Spirit. It's found in Scripture. Jesus said, abide in me that your joy may be full. By to my words. We get joy when we see our children walking in truth in 3 John. In 2 John, there's joy when we have personal fellowship. Go to 2 John chapter 1, verse 12. And you tell me that that what we're experiencing in the whole world this last year is, is more than just a, um, a health crisis. I, I believe that the enemy knows exactly uh, how to attack people. Look at verse 12. Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink, but I trust to come unto you and speak, what's it say? Face to face that are... Joy 
may be full. Wow. There is something about personal fellowship that cannot be replaced with anything else. Can't. Third, second John. Uh, they wanted to come and make sure. I can write it to you, but I want to give it to you face to face. I want to be there. Joy. There's a joy in Christian fellowship. First John chapter 1. If you want to see it, verse 3 and 4. That which we have seen and heard declare unto you that, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. These things write we unto you that your joy may be full. <clears throat> it's not in meat and drink. It's in the fruit of the Spirit, found in the Scriptures, fellowship of the Savior. Oh boy, it's even through forced by suffering for the Lord. There can be joy when you suffer for Jesus. 1 Peter chapter 4 tells us that. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse number 3 says, uh, did I get that? 1 Peter 4, 13, 13 says, But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. That's a future joy, isn't it? The future joy. If we can suffer with Christ now, man, there's going to be an exceeding joy one day when we meet Him face to face. Okay, <clears throat> so righteousness is from God through salvation in Christ. Joy is found in fellowship with God. And then I skipped over that, that peace one, right? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And I think that the peace is the one that you have that passes understanding. I think, again, it's granted from God uh, through Jesus Christ, and then you just have it. And I don't know if you can explain necessarily what you do to get it. It just is given when you've got that righteousness with Him. I can go to sleep at night and not worry a thing about where I'm going to go when I die. <clears throat> I did not always have that peace. And there were times when I wondered and, and was worried about it. Now, here's the message, okay? Things that edify is what we ought to focus on. Things that edify is what we ought to focus on. Romans 14 says, let me find my place again. The kingdom of God, is, it's, it's righteousness, peace, and joy. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Doctrine is very important for a church because the more we read the Bible, the more we could find to argue over if we're not in agreement with it. Does that make sense? We, we will, if, if there's a, a different uh, doctrinal view, eventually we'll probably come to... <clears throat> to uh, uh, dissension over it the more the Bible we read. But I think the Bible is what we need to read more of. And so doctrine to keep a church in peace on the most important things is, is very important. Uh, I'm not against other churches, but I, I, I just know because of what I believe about Scripture, I cannot go to a church that baptizes babies. I can't do it. I can't do it. Sorry. Love you. not saying you're not going to heaven. I'm just saying I can't be a part of that. I can't be a part of people that, uh, a part of a church that um, uh, teaches that you can lose salvation. I'm not saying they're not saved. I just cannot go with that knowing that it would add works and it would add human effort to being a part. I can't, I cannot, I can't do that. I can't do it. Um, I, I personally, I, I, w I can't be a part of a church that's not going to stick with this Bible. I'm just, I'm sold on it and that's just mine. I don't think you have to have that same uh, deep conviction, but that's mine. I, I've had steak. I'm not going back to hot dogs, okay? I just, uh, I, I, that's why I feel about it. Uh, I could list a whole bunch of things, okay? But now that we have a church that we can say, okay, I'm going to be a part of this church. I'm going to fellowship here, and I'm going to grow in this body. Well, now that we've got these big things already figured out that we can jump in and be a part, now let's seek to edify, and let's, let's go after things of peace. You're not going to hear me preach too many sermons on whether angels and people mix in Genesis 6, on whether uh, 
Uh, Adam had a belly button. You're not going to hear me teach a whole bunch of sermons on the age of the earth or on, uh, the, on, on when Satan was created. I, I, I can talk about all that stuff, but you're not going to hear, and I, I'm not bringing up the call. I, I'm just trying to show, i got to be careful here. I'm just trying to show you, we could find enough things that would not edify each other, and it would be words to no profit. Yeah. Romans 14 says, let's follow after things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. So let me give you a few things that we got to be with edifying, okay? First of all, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 8. 1 Corinthians 8, I'm almost finished, but I think this will be good. 1 Corinthians 8, 1. <clears throat> now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but... Charity, what's it say? Charity edifieth. Charity is decided love. It is like a love that a mother has for the kid, no matter how ugly that kid is. Can you all say amen? I mean, I'm just telling you. It, 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 it's, it's a love that's unconditional, and it should be the way a husband has for a wife or a wife has for a husband. Uh, it, it's the love that God has for you even when you're bad. Church, have some love even when things are bad. Hope they aren't. Hope they never get that way. But you want to please God, you want to build up each other, it's fought for peace, love. Choose to love it. It's not always easy. There are times when, when things happen that are, seem unlovable. That's, that's when they need it. When did the uh, Good Samaritan shine? Not when the guy was on the road walking his way, but when he was beat up by the thieves and laid to the side of the road. That's when he needed the love. Well, how did he get there? He should have been hanging around thieves. He should have been walking down that alley at night. It don't matter. He was on the side of the road, and the Samaritans once showed love. The Pharisees and the priests walked on by. Love edifies. Love someone. Find someone who's hard to love. That's when you really know your charity in them and not just a, a phileo in them, or agape in them, okay? Agape is charity, phileo is just because it's convenient and it's good. Not totally, but you know what I'm saying. There's a different depth of love there. Love is what edifies. Look at chapter 10, verse 23 of 1 Corinthians. <clears throat> all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things, what? Edify not. Okay? So there's some things that aren't going to be edifying. You could do them, and you could talk about them, but they're not going to be building up. So Romans 14 says, let's follow after things that edify. Okay, well, let's look at this. Go to chapter 14. 1 Corinthians 14. Verse number three. He that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. If you're preaching, you ought to be building somebody up. You ought to be exhorting them and comfort. Now, that also means to build up. Sometimes you've got to tear down the sin, right? You've got to take out the filthiness before you can fill up the house. But preaching should have those elements in it. Look at verse 5. I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret, that the church may receive, what's it say? Edify. If you're speaking in an unknown language, no one else knows what you're saying. Maybe great, maybe good. Brother Dwight talked about Christianese last Saturday. Some of the words we use that no one else understands. I asked a young fellow, I said, hey, when did you get born again? He said, I don't know what that means. Well, I, too bad for you. That's what the Bible says. No, I had to explain to him what it meant. And it actually allowed me to lead him to the Lord. But if, if people don't know what we're saying, it doesn't do them good. Now, this is talk about specific languages. And it says that you need to be able to edify the church. Look at verse 12. Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the what? Edifying of the church. 
well, I really want to do this for God. Is it going to edify the church? Or is it just going to make you be edified? We need to seek after things that would edify the church. Um, I, I'm committed to Bible Baptist Church. I am. And I, I could probably go out to farm shows uh, every week, find some place to go out and sow in, and I would love to do that. I'm telling you, if I had another life, you guys would be on the back burner. I'd be at every trade show just, just trying to lead people to Christ and say, forget the counseling, forget the marriages, forget the funerals. I'm just going to lead people to Jesus. I don't think that would edify the church. I feel like I'm called to be a pastor of a church. Well, but preacher, you could do great if you went to the Philippines. They love corny jokes. You could go there and you would have a monstrous ministry. I don't think that would edify the church. Could do it, but I need to seek after things that would edify. edify the, now, the, there's churches there, don't get me wrong. But whatever you're seeking to do, make sure it's what, what would edify the church. Have that in your mind. Have that in your heart. What can I do? Well, I'm a Christian just between me and God. No, not your spiritual gifts are not. Your spiritual gifts are so you can build up and edify the church. You get them are from God. Hey, are you building up the church the way you're living? The way you're doing, giving, whatever? Okay, um, look at verse 26. How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. Edifying. I've got to give you two more at least before I let you go. Uh, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. This one's preaching to me, so that's why I want to make sure you hear it. Okay? I've got to <clears throat> step on my toes. Let's, let's edify. Let's try to build up another believer. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, look at verse 8. And God is able to make... Oh, I'm sorry, wrong, wrong place. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 8. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification and not for your... I should not be ashamed. Whatever authority you are given in life, it is not to destroy, it is to edify. I am not called to destroy my kids' lives. They think I am, but I'm not, okay? I, I am there to build them up. I am not here to preach down at every person that comes in the building and make them feel like horrible, wicked people so that preacher can be lifted. No. If I have any authority, it should be used to build up, to edify the church. It doesn't just say that there. Look at, look at chapter 13 of 2 Corinthians, verse 10. It says it twice. <clears throat> Therefore I write these things, being absent, lest being present I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord hath given me to edification and not to destruction. Charity edifies. Make sure your authority edifies. If you're, if you're teaching a class, don't use that position to destroy or to divide. Use it to build up and be careful. There's a lot of liberty in any place of authority. There's liberty. No one has given me the, the, the rundown of how to pastor a church besides the Bible. There's a lot of liberty there. You're a business owner, Blaine. No one tells you what to do when you get up in the morning, do you? Well, your wife does, but I mean, besides that, right? He's a business owner. Larry's a farmer. No one tells you. You, you, you there's a lot of liberty. Uh, uh, different people, a lot of liberty in in positions of authority. Use it to edify, not to destroy. And then there's uh, ministry callings. Ephesians four says he gave apostles and all these teachers and pastors for the edifying. Of the body. And then I want to show you this one. Ephesians 4, 29. I'm going to show you one more after this too. Ephesians 4, 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. 
And so, be careful how we talk. Be careful what we say. It's to edify, not to uh, tear down. Let, don't let evil communication. It's not just the curse words. We talked about that a few weeks ago. It's other things too. It's, it's foul. It's rotten. Rotten stuff. No, don't bring it back up. Just let it, let it be behind you. And then 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. This builds me up too. And I, I try to be careful that I'm not preaching about this one subject every time I'm up in front of people. But this last year, <clears throat> I believe we've seen more things come in line with the coming of the Antichrist than the last 10 years put together. Now, there's been some uh, uh, things that have transpired. We've, uh, uh, as a country, we've gone way the wrong way in the last 10, 15 years morally. We've accepted uh, homosexuality. We have promoted uh, transgenderism. We have uh, extended uh, more abortions than ever before. I mean, there, there's all kinds of things we can point in bad. But worldwide, this is getting close to, to Jesus returning. Yeah. Airlines, countries are talking about passes and health uh, databases to know what you have and what you don't have and what you're not going to be able to do and what you are going to be able to do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just telling you, th this ain't going to get any less. And this is over a virus that has a 98% uh, survival rate. Wait till you get one a little bit more serious. Wait till there's really a cause for concern. Civil liberties will be gone. I've told everyone, if little kids were getting this, there wouldn't be church services because no one would come anyway. And I'm sorry for our older folks. It seems that they're more susceptible, but I, I'm just telling you that's the way it is in life. You care about them little ones way more than they do about us older people. And I'm, I'm in your group now. I'm over 40, okay? I'm over the hill. <clears throat> that's just the way, that, that's the way it is. If a, little, if a little child dies, you say, oh my goodness, what a tragedy. Someone older, well, they had a great, they lived a long, good life. Yeah. That's what we say. That's what we say. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think there's any long enough life. I'm just telling you, that's what people say. But 1 Thessalonians 5 and I know I'm over time. Sorry, YouTubers. I'm almost done. Verse 1. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have... I'm in 1 Thessalonians 5. Did I tell you that? 1 Thessalonians 5. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. <clears throat> For when they shall say peace and safety... By the way, look up the word peace in your Strong's Concordance. I just dare you. Look up that word peace, and you'll be surprised what is connected to it. I'm not even going to tell you, just going to challenge you. Then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. You're children of the light, children of the day. And we are, of the night, uh, we are not of the night nor the darkness. Verse 6, let us... Let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep in the night, they that be drunken are drunk in the night. But let us who are the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith, love, helmet, hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. That's a wonderful verse. Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. Look at verse 11. <clears throat> Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also you do. We should edify one another with our love, with our authority, with our ministry, with our speech, and finally, with the future prophecies. What is going on ought to build us up. Yeah. We ought to be, yes, Jesus is coming. I don't like these, the, the direction. Yeah, but I like what it's leading us to. Jesus is coming again. And we ought to edify and build up each other with that. I think I could I'd probably preach at every service th this last year. I just It's exciting to me. Um, and I don't want to overdo uh, it because we need to be earthly minded to, to reach people, but I'm going to be heavenly minded that he's coming soon. Amen? <clears throat> edify with some things. Follow after the things of peace that we can edify one another. Not all things edify. So let's, let's just... Let's just forget whether Adam had a belly button or not, okay? If you think he did, great. I don't think he did, so I could be wrong too. Let's, let, let's, let's focus on some of these things and build each other up for the things of God. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. I pray that you bless the study of Romans. And Lord, uh, uh, meat and drink, all these things need to be talked about, but I just, uh, 
as we, we study this, that let's, let's, let's go on, because the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy and the Holy Ghost. And, and Father, I, I pray that 